In the Club Random podcast featuring Bill Maher and Fred Durst, they discuss their drink preferences, with Fred drinking Reposado and Bill having a whiskey called Rod Got Saloon. Then, they discuss the popularity of tequila and its origins, with Fred mentioning Sammy Hagar's tequila. Bill asks Fred if he hangs out with regular people or if he's always in the rock and roll lifestyle with groupies, drugs, and blasting music. Fred avoids a direct answer and instead talks about his experiences at the Playboy Mansion, where he played backgammon instead. Bill shares his own experience of throwing parties, and how he would roll joints and ensure drinks were easy to come by. They discuss the concept of having more bartenders at a bar to sell more liquor and speculate on why more bars don't do this. The conversation ends with them joking about the high cost of liquor at bars. Bill Maher then discusses with guest Fred Durst the idea of getting nicer as one gets older. Maher mentions that he believes this is due to becoming less insecure as one ages and is no longer as focused on achieving success. They then go on to talk about Woody Harrelson's treehouse property in Maui, which Maher has visited in the past. Maher describes the treehouse as an actual house built into a tree, which Harrelson had the money to make elaborate. Maher also mentions that Harrelson loves forming new bromance and that he and Durst have a great one, although it may not be reciprocated in the same way. Maher asks Durst if he has the rockstar confidence to pick up anyone he wants, to which Durst says that it's not about that, but rather he can feel people's energy, and he thinks Mar might be into him. Mar says that it's not just about how you look, it's how you look at someone. He advises being honest with women and not leading them on, saying that they will respect you for it. They then discuss Mar's home and style before Durst asks if he's single, to which Mar replies that he doesn't want to be in love with someone. Mar and Durst joke about their ages and the effects of aging, with Mar pointing out that he has to be careful about how much liquor he drinks because even one drink can lead to heart disease. Durst admits to smoking clove cigarettes and drinking frequently, even on Wednesdays, but acknowledges that he has had the vaccine. The two also discuss their careers and upcoming tours, with Durst explaining that the beard he is currently sporting is for a character he will be playing on tour. Ma proposes that Durst host his show and Durst agrees, jokingly asking if he will have to deal with booze from the audience. Ma expresses his concern about the reaction he will receive from the crowd when he joins Durst on stage since he believes he is not well known among the younger generation. However, Durst reassures him by saying that he is a hero to these people and that they will appreciate hearing Mar's opinions because he speaks the truth. Durst believes that his music is timeless and that the feeling in the music still resonates with young people today. Mar expresses doubt in the younger generation's appreciation for his opinions, to which Durst suggests that some of them do and offers to prove it through a bet that can be filmed. They then proceed to joke around about this bet, with Mar suggesting that Durst wants him to perform oral sex on him. They also discuss the difference between the primal and emotional impact of music and the more intellectual impact of comedy. During the podcast, they discuss the differences between their experiences performing live. Ma reminisced about his performance in San Francisco and how the crowd was not as woke as he anticipated. He jokingly compared them to being in a bacchanalian frenzy while holding severed heads. The conversation then shifted to the topic of Woodstock where Mar talked about his experience as a 13-year-old during the first festival in 1969. They also touched on the lack of consensus on facts, particularly regarding the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Mar emphasized that people now have their own set of facts, and that the Trump election is a glaring example of this. He also mentioned that the same is true for the left, where people believe in crazy ideas as a form of religion. Durst chimed in on this topic, agreeing that people feel strongly about their beliefs and that facts have become relative. They then discussed the recent revelation of Fox News anchors knowing that Trump lost the election but still saying the opposite on live television. This led them to conclude that everything is now about feeling and not about facts. Mar stresses that the point of the podcast is not to discuss politics but he wants to share his passion for music with Durst. Durst agrees, expressing his enthusiasm for the good vibes and positive energy that music can create. Mar acknowledges that Durst's love of music is evident and that he would love to collaborate with him musically in the future. They both express their appreciation for the power of music to bring people together, and acknowledge the role it has played in their own lives. In addition, Durst mentions that Mar is his first podcast appearance, and that he has enjoyed his time on the show, even suggesting that they continue their conversation without the cameras. Durst also reflects on the history of his home, stating that it was a party house for 20 years before it became empty. They reminisce about Joel and Allison giving out weed cookies at the mansion in Vegas and Fred talks about how he switched to clove cigarettes from smoking too much pot. Fred goes on to mention that his public persona portrays him as someone who likes to troll but in reality, he is a hermit who likes to keep things low-key and mainly listens to 70s music. He mentions his love for Jackson Brown and Dawes, a musical group that sounds like a mix of Jackson Brown and something new. 
Bill asks Fred if he likes any current artists, and he mentions The Weeknd, who he believes makes records that sound like they could have been hit in any decade. Fred Durst also goes on to talk about how he grew up on a farm in North Carolina, and how he always wanted to be a filmmaker. However, his plan to direct music videos and make a name for himself in Hollywood didn't happen the way he thought it would. He put together the band Limp Bizkit, initially as a vehicle to achieve his ultimate goal of directing movies. However, Limp Bizkit became culturally phenomenal and unexpectedly became the main focus of his career. Bill comments that to reach that level of bigness, a band must have both talent and hit the zeitgeist at the right moment with the right thing. Durst shared his experience of being bullied as a child and how he used music to fight back but ironically ended up attracting his bullies to become his fans. Marr suggested the theme of Durst's movie to be based on the idea that the people in the audience become the thing that he was trying to escape from. The discussion then moved on to cover songs and how they can sometimes be an entertaining version of an already great song. Marr expressed that music is subjective, and there is no point in convincing someone to like a particular song. Durst explains that the band's fans who grew up listening to their music are now older and not as interested, so they are focusing on reaching a new generation. Durst mentions that he ceased marketing and advertising the band to see if their music could rise above the noise of the music industry. He believes that being authentic is crucial in connecting with young people, who are knowledgeable about media and don't like to be marketed to. He and Mar agree that many young people lack basic knowledge due to a faulty education system, but are savvy in navigating media. Mar mentions that he has received some criticism for throwing shade at millennials and Gen Z, but believes that most of them appreciate his honesty and straightforwardness. Durst adds that young people today are often told they are special by parents and society but are then met with harsh realities in the world outside, leading to problems. Bill Maher and Fred Durst also discuss the concept of zero-point energy, which is the idea of taking energy from the vacuum in space to power everything we need. Fred believes that this technology could revolutionize the way we consume energy, making it free and without the need for power grids. However, Maher is skeptical and questions the science behind the concept, stating that wanting to believe in something does not make it possible or real. He argues that if you do not understand the science behind something, it becomes a matter of faith instead of fact. They also briefly discuss the topic of the Beatles, debating who was the leader of the band, John Lennon or Paul McCartney. Marr expresses his amazement at the band's ability to write 14 new songs in just 28 days, despite the global attention and pressure they were facing at the time. He notes that this kind of unflappability and calmness in the face of adversity can only come from a hard scrabble upbringing. Durst echoes Marr's sentiments and shares an example from his own band's process, where they rely on noodling and improvisation to create music together. The conversation then turns to Barry White, whom Durst describes as an anchor and composer, much like himself in his own band. Marr expresses his admiration for White's musical talent and ability to direct an orchestra without writing anything down, and notes that his records kick ass. Durst identifies with White's approach to music, playing by ear and reacting to the other members of his band. Marr asks Durst what alias he uses at hotels, but Durst dodges the question and tries to turn the conversation in a different direction. However, Marr persists and mentions his own alias, Haywood Jablomi. Durst continues to avoid the question until Marr jokingly suggests that Durst's fake name could be Willie Fisterbottom. The conversation then turns to a discussion of Marr's property, which Durst compliments. Marr reveals that he bought the property in 2001 and later purchased the house next door as a vacation home. Club Random, the location where the interview is taking place, is on Marr's property. The conversation then shifts to Durst's character and how he developed his comedic skills. Durst mentions that he knew he wanted to be a comedian from a young age, citing his father's humor as an influence. Durst also talks about his family bonding over watching television together when he was a child. Bill Maher and Fred Durst discuss the concept of death and spirituality. They agree that nobody likes death and those who think they are going to a better place are taking quite a bet, as one must be either dumb or crazy like a fox to believe it. However, Fred suggests that spirituality gives an amazing peace of mind that could be key to good health. Bill agrees, and they go on to discuss how relationships, even good ones, can be stressful, and how being alone can also be lonely and stressful. Fred suggests that the most stressful thing for him has been wanting to keep something together when it is hard to do so. Bill believes that positive energy can create the world one wants, although Fred is skeptical of this. They then talk about being themselves at their age, doing what they want, and not talking to people they do not want to talk to. While discussing their favorite actors, Durst expresses his admiration for Casey Affleck's acting abilities believing that he is a greater actor than his brother Ben, who is a perfectly fine actor. The two also discuss how both of these actors are still considered legit in Hollywood, even though Ben Affleck is more of a movie star than a filmmaker. 
The conversation then turns towards Jason Bourne movies, which Mark claims is his favorite franchise. He praises Matt Damon's acting abilities, stating that nobody loves Jason Bourne more than he does. The two also mention how Jeremy Renner was great in the Bourne movie he starred in, but Durst expresses his disappointment in what happened to the actor. The conversation is lighthearted, with some jokes thrown in, such as Mars' Bob Hope snowplow joke. Durst also praises the treehouse on Mars' property, where guests are treated, and mentions that Ben Affleck had lived in it before. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.